Okay. Today we're going to start on Tezayin and Medbez and the Mishnah. Rabbi and Tamlamud. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. It's the of our learning. Beis Amigdash, immediately. Good morning. Okay, hot, hot water on a cold Miami day. <laughs> okay, does um, Mabin Tam Lamud Mishnah? What's the difference between a Tam and the Muad? Tam is a tame animal, right? The first three times when it goes in the Muad. Is an animal that was forewarned. Good morning. It says, same animal the first three times where it gores another animal, it pays, pays half the price. Right at the Mishnah. And how does it pay? It pays it pays from the body of the of the damaging animal. And the forewarned animal, Mishal Nasik Shalom and Aliyah. It pays the full price and it pays it from not from the body of the animal, but it actually pays from the best of his property. My Aliyah, the Gemara asks, what do you mean Aliyah? Aliyah could also mean the attic. Amar Abelazar, Abelazar says, from it doesn't mean the attic, it doesn't have to do with its location of where it is. It means that it's the best of his possessions. It also says, Chizkiyahu lay with his fathers. That's an expression in the Tanakh that means he died. And they buried him in the best of the graves of the sons of David. For Amr Abelazar, what is and Rabbi Lazar explains what does it mean Bemaila in the best, in the or he explains it that Bemaila ate some Ulam Shem Meshbachi, who was buried. Chizkiyahu was buried next to. The best of the family of David, Maniu, Maninu. Who are they? David and Shlomo, who is buried near David and Shlomo. Shlomo in there by Kever David. David's a uh, member. Anyone been to Kever David? And there's Shlomo there, in, in, next to David. No, Shlomo's not there. Uh-huh. Um, I think what the Gemara is telling us is that um, that Chizkiyahu's father, Achaz, was not um, was not a righteous person. Opposite, and so Chizkiyahu was not buried with his father. He was buried with David, with the righteous people of David, of the family of David. Okay, now the Gemara goes on. David. <coughs> They buried him. This is not talking about Chizkiah right now. This is talking about Asa, who was a king of uh, another king, also a righteous king. They buried him in the grave that he dug, that they dug for him, the ear David in the city of David. And they lay him on a bed, probably on a like a, um, a coffin that was filled with spices and Zanim is probably other spices. Type, types of spices, that's what I mean. My besamim is zanim, what does it mean spices and zanim? Rabbi Lezer Eimer, Rabbi Lezer says, do you have a pencil? Yeah, I got Rabbi Lezer says, he still has, he still has an eraser. <laughs> I'm bad enough. Um, Rabbi Leza says that it's uh, Zine 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 it means types, types of spices Types of spices Rabbi Shmuel Ben Achmeni Amar Rabbi Shmuel Ben Achmeni says Besamim Shkala Merech Ben Baladei Zima You see the word Zanim sounds like the word Zaina which means promiscuous uh, promiscuous woman so, but zine also could also mean types. So, it's, what's this um, this language that seems to be similar? So, it's saying that anyone that smells the spices will come to promiscuous behavior. 
that's the uh, the connection in that word. Okay, Kikaru. This is Yermia now talking. Kikaru shucha lelachteni. They dug a pit to trap me. Pachim tamna leragla, and they set up other types of traps, snares or something. They um, they they hid for my feet to catch my feet. Rabbi Lazar Amar. Rabbi Lazar says. And it says they said they dug a pit for him to, um, to trap him. Yermio had a lot of enemies <coughs> because he prophesied that the city was going to be destroyed. And um, the people did not want to hear that. They wanted to hear that everything's going to be great and you don't have to worry, you don't have to do tshuva or anything. We're going to be fine. So what did they do? They tried to um, to silence him. So they said, Rabbi Lazar says, <laughs> they suspected him that he had lived with the Zaina, or that he did. And now, the problem is that he's not allowed to marry a Zaina because he's a Kayan. Facebook adds that in. Um, otherwise, a Zaina just means a woman that's uh, promiscuous. So what? I mean, she was a single woman. She's still permissible to get married. But no, not if he's a Kayan. Um, Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmani Amar Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmani says that Shachastu Meishesish they suspected him of living with a, 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 someone married to another man, uh, and that would be adultery. Ishlam Elaman Dam Shachastu Mizayna. It understand we understand what he said what what the meaning of the verse that says that they dug a pit for him, and and the Gemara is interpreting that. What does it mean? They dug a pit. It means they suspected him of living with the Zayna. Why? Hainad Eksiv Kishucha Muka Zayna. Because the Zayna is a deep pit. What does it mean? How does it explain that in the in that context? Yeah, and how does the verse continue? Do you have the full verse there? If you click on it, does it? Uh, so you have to buy the whole uh, thing. Do you have the rest of the verse? Proverbs 23. Proverbs. So you go back over here. I don't know how to go back. What do I do? The menu? Refresh? No. What is it? How does, does it finish the verse? Okay, that's it. Okay. Ella Lamandam Shachistumi Ashes is, but according to the one that says that they suspected Yermio of living with a married woman, adulterous uh, relation, relations, my Shucha, what do you mean a pit? We have a pasuk that says that a zaina is compared to a pit. Atu the Gemara answers atu eshes just mean nafka mechal zaina. But it's what's the problem? A married woman that lives with a someone that's not her husband is also a zaina. Is this, um, so it's a, another pit. Same thing. Pit of one of the four categories. Four of them. Yeah, but we're not dealing with the damage as like someone sets up a pit. Now we're never dealing with that. Um, with um, how they were trying to get Yerm Yermio into trouble to uh, to silence him. Yeah. Uh, the Gemara is saying the one the opinion that says, which is Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmani, that says that they suspected him of living with a married woman, and that's um, that's fits with another verse that it says because he says he says in you Hashem you know. That all they're trying to do is to kill me. Now, if someone lives with a married woman, the punishment for that is the death penalty. Skila. Right? Uh, but according to the opinion that says that they suspected him of living with a promiscuous woman, <coughs> Maila Mavis, what what do you mean for death? There's no death penalty. Someone that lives with a, just a, a single girl that's not married. My answer says, they threw him into a pit. Doesn't mean that they that the 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 claim against him is a pit. They actually threw him into a pit. Here we get lashes, but that's not death. It says no. It means that they threw him into a pit. And when he's in a pit, that's he could die in the pit. Okay. Loose woman can get you into deep trouble fast.
So deep trouble means the pit, right? Okay. Tarash <laughs> My Rav. What's the meaning of the Pasuk? You mechshalem lefanecha. They should be stumbled, stumbled before you. Ve'isa pecha sebehem. Do with them at the time of your anger. Amar Yirmiyah lefanecha kadosh baruch hu. This is Yirmiyah speaking to Hashem. He says, Rabbi Nishalaylam. Afila b'shash shayshem tzedakah. Even at the time when they're doing tzedakah, the people that are my enemies are doing nice things. Echshilam b'vniyadam shayim melganim. You should uh, have them stumble with giving tzedakah to people that don't really need it. They should like they shouldn't get a reward. Just like these, uh, you know, these Yiddish curses or like, like really. Uh, so, um, so you should be uh, cursed with, you know, hard butter on soft bread, you know, or something. You know, it's <laughs> very like wicked type. Okay, okay you should. Uh... That's for the big house. You should drop bed in each room. Awful. <laughs> right. oh. So here his curse was that they should have they should give tzedakah to people that don't really need it. Okay. Otherwise they would get a reward. Recovered Asalai Now we're going back to Chizkia. It's the king, one of the kings of Yehuda. A, 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 a very good king. Could have been Mashiach. So righteous king. Covered us like my side. They did an honor when he died. Malame, this teaches us that they set up a yeshiva by his by his burial. Taisa adds in, it's not mamish on the grave. It was four amas away because you're really on the grave itself. <laughs> you shouldn't be, well, first of all, you shouldn't be standing on the grave. But it, um, if it's within four cubits of the grave, then it's considered layeg larash. It's mocking the, uh, the poor. Because since the dead are, can't do mitzvahs, you're not supposed to do mitzvahs, right? That's why when you go to a funeral, you talk it's it's that's, that's the rule. When you go to a cemetery. Because you don't want to mock the poor by showing them, like, ha, 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 I, know, I can do mitzvahs, and you can't. They have the fences there. Yeah. Maybe that's, uh, that helps. So, Pligi by Reb Nassan Verabanan. There's a machlekes between Reb Nassan and the Rabbanan. Karam Shlesha. One says that that yeshiva that they had there was for three days. Adam or Shiva, one says for seven days. Some say it was for 30 days. Yeah. Nowadays they do, um, like for a yard site, they do uh, special learning for someone, you know, Mishnayas or something. Someone's yard site. Tanar Abana, started in the Braxa, we covered us a little bit, say. They they uh, they did they had they performed the honor, but by his death, the Chizki Melech Yehuda. Obviously, this is Chizki Melech Yehuda. The Gemara is just introducing what it's about to say. She yet the fun of Shleishim v'Shisha Elaf Chalutzi Kaser. That there were thirty six thousand people that went out in mourning, and the way that they would shine a sign of mourning in those days was that it's instead of tearing the clothing, which that they, they would do also, but they would. Um, they would take the shoulder off. They would take the the uh, like the shirt out of the shoulder, and one shoulder would be exposed. That was a sign of mourning. Yeah, chalutze kase is a picture here. See, see that chalutze kase. It's a, a picture of uh, mourning. Rabbi Yehuda, that's Rabbi Yehuda's words. Now, um, no, by the way, I, I didn't point out. It says the covered asulai they did for him. Taisus mentioned that the loy is thirty six. It's a gematria, gematria of thirty six. So the Gemara says Rabbi Nehemiah tells Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Nehemiah and Rabbi Yehuda are very common to argue in in Agadita in um, in Medrash. Very common, just like we, we would have like Rav and Shmuel or uh, in the Gemara. So Rabbi Nechemia and Rabbi Yehuda. Now Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai, and Rabbi Nechemia is the uh, is another student of Rabbi Akiva, but he sort of put on the side because um, the main five students of Rabbi Akiva 
is Reb Meir, Reb Yaisi, Reb Yehuda, Reb Elisa Ben Shmuel, and Reb and Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. And it, then it says, and also Reb Nechemia. It's like, and also, it's like he gets added to the side because it could have been he was maybe a little older or something. I don't know. So Reb Nechemia says to Reb Yehuda, he says, You're telling me about Chizkia? They did the same for Achav. Achav was a very wicked king. He was from the north. Chizkia uh, is from the south. Ella Shenichu Sefeter al Mitasev Ar Mekim Zeh Mashakas Bzeh. No, for for um, Chizkia they did something extra. When he was being taken out for burial, they they put a Sefeter on the on the bier, and they they said that this person laying here fulfilled everything that was written in this. So, but in the Nami of Dinan Hachi, apparently they would they would do that. Uh, uh, as well, they would do uh, the same thing for. Oh, nice. uh-huh. My father's here. Okay, sure. He's, uh, they would. They do this today as well. It's not such a big chiddush that they did it for Chizkia. The Gemara says no. Afuke mafkinan. They would definitely put a sefer Torah there, but anuche manchinan. But they don't put it. They take it out, but they don't put it on the uh, on the beer. They don't lay it there. <coughs> no, Taisvis says that there's actually a problem to sit on the same bench um, that a safer Torah is on. So there would be a problem to put the body on the on the bench of the on the uh, on the same as a safer Torah. And Taisvis answers. He says, "No, Chizkia was different. He was such a great person." <laughs> Another pshat. Um, they would put it on the on the coffin, on the beer, but they wouldn't say that that the person fulfilled everything that's in the Torah. We're talking about the the, the funeral of Chizkia Amela. Amar Rabba Barbachana, Rabba Barbachana says, "Avi Aslinan Bahadi de Rabbi Yechanan." I was walking together with Rabbi Yechanan, Lemishal Shmaita, to ask him questions in halacha. He Avi Ayel Lebeisa Kisei. When Rabbi Yechanan went, entered into the bathroom, have a binim and a At that point, I asked him a question. And he didn't answer us. That's interesting. I would say, interesting. I know, but he, you're supposed to make the bracha before you put the tefillin on. Um, okay. Okay, but maybe just, I don't know. Okay. If you put on, I don't know, I don't have any comments here in my Gemara that, that, that discuss that, but it's an interesting phrase. Well, there's a commentary. What do you have? Put on the tefillin, and then he's making the brach. Oh, before he ties it. Yeah, that's oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh-huh. uh-huh. Where are you reading from? Gos. Uh, well, and, well, uh, oh, you have from Rabbi Rab- Rab- Yaakov? Yaakov. Uh-huh. I have everything. Okay. Computer. Yeah, Dr. Stein has uh, the notes from Rabbi Yaakov in, in, in the iPad. <laughs> okay. Rabbi Yaakov Emden was um, about 300 years ago. It was a great uh, uh, con- controversial uh, oh, figure, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was a fighter against everyone that was any Shabzai Tzvi uh, oh. meaning so he basically was always like getting, was like searching for uh, who's who's guilty who's, yeah. so so he puts on Tzvi who's a great uh, a great sage he has um, notes on a lot of things uh, even on the tour yes so um, he put, uh, Rabbi Yechonon puts on the tefillin, he says the bracha of Hadar Amalan, and then he says, Afilu kiyam amrinan, limid la yamrinan. By another person's funeral, you could say that he kept everything that's in the Torah, but you don't say that he taught. You don't say that he taught. You know, it's the Chiddush of Chizkia. It says about Chizkia that in, during his time, they searched from Beersheba until Don. I forget where that Gemara is. Yeah, it's here. The Taisus quotes it before. From Don until Beersheba, and they couldn't find a man, woman, or child that were not experts in the laws of Tumah. 
uh, I think he said that anyone that doesn't learn is going to be pierced with the sword. So that's sort of like an incentive to, 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 to get a good grade on your test. So, um, so uh, he was a great teacher of Torah. Bomber Ma, the Gemara says, one second. You're telling me that the, the learning of Torah is more important than the action, and by you, we're willing to say that other people fulfilled the Torah. You're just not willing to say that they taught the Torah. It's exactly the opposite, because the whole greatness of Torah is that it brings to action. So if you're willing to say about other people, by other people's funerals, that they, that they fulfilled the Torah, that's even greater than studying the Torah. Gemara says, like cash. It's not a problem because hala migmar, hala gmuri. Depends. If it's talking about learning the Torah, your own personal learning is all there just to bring to action. I'm giving you Rashi's chat. Your own personal learning is to, just to bring to action. So what's the main point of your learning is to fulfill the Torah. But when it comes to teaching Torah, that's greater than the action. That's the chat according to Rashi. Um, the teacher doesn't have to learn myself. Is for I, I think it says. There? I think it says Talmud Torah. The Rabbin, I think it says, pushes off theoretically would push off even a mitzvah she'ir shal l'kaim al yedechem. I think it says that. Um, but anyway, um, Taisus over here. Basically, what the rabbis are about. That's what the rabbis are about. Taisus, this is your mission. Taisus, yeah. <coughs> Taisva says, quotes a Gemara in Kedushan, which we learned last, and it comes from that Gemara that this phrase is really is, means the opposite. We're, we're, we're quoting it here, and we're getting the wrong uh, conclusion. Uh, not the wrong, a different conclusion than what it said in Kedushan. Over there it says that Gadol, Limud Gadol Shemevel De Maisa. It's not that is Gadol, it's that Limud's Gadol. That's what we got. You see, it's a very confusing phrase. Great is study because study leads to action. But what, what he really said was great is study. So that wouldn't fit at all with our Gemara. Um, yeah, so Taisa uh, changes the chat over here a little bit. The interesting thing is at the end of Taisa, he quotes a Shiltes de Rabachoy Goin. It comes out, according to this, exactly the opposite. He says, when you're learning for yourself, that's greater than action. But when you're teaching, then that's not greater than action. He does it exactly the opposite. And, but, and so where does he get that from? Because that doesn't fit really with our Gemara. So Taish finishes off explaining that where you get, he, got this, he got this from um, the fact that Rabbi Yochanan doesn't answer the question until he puts on his tefillin. Why didn't he answer the question first? First, if teaching Torah is so important, says, no, the action is more important. That's why he puts on the tone first. Okay. Um, the Gemara says, I'm Rabbi Yechem, Mishim, Shimon, Ben Yechem. It's Yechai. probably also because the COVID is going to be better. It's not to... 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 Yeah, but here with... The, the question was... And why did he have to put on his tefillin after he came out of the bathroom? They asked him a question before he went, and he should answer right away. Um, and then put the tefillin on. So according to the shiltes, what he was doing was he was, the mice is gadol, the action is more important. So you have to, that takes precedence over teaching the tefillin. That comes out different in the way we were explaining it, according to Rashi. Om Rabbi Yechanan Mishim Rabbi Shimon Ben Yechai, that's very common. Rabbi Yechanan says, in the name of Rabbi Ben Yechai, my dexiv, what's the meaning of the Pasuk? Ashrechem zayre al kalmayim, happy are those that plant by the water. Mishalchi regel, those that send the foot, hashar vachamar, of the ox and the donkey. The Gemara explains like this, the Rabbi Yechanan explains, kolo isik patera gmils chasadim, anyone that's involved in Torah, that toils in Torah and does action, we're going to learn that zayre means that he's doing gmils chasadim. Mayim is going to be referring to Torah. You'll see in a minute. Zoichel and Achlash Neishvatim. His merits, the two tribes that are compared to the ox and the donkey. You'll see in a minute. Shnemar says in the pasuk Ashrechem Zoyre. Happy are those that 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 sow that that plant. Veins real tzedaka. Sowing means tzedaka. Shnemar zir lechem tzedaka v'kitzel lefi chasid. Plant for you as uh, righteousness and harvest according to the kindness. 
Bein mayim el teira, and water is referring to teira. Shnemer hoikol sami lechulam mayim. Whoa! All that are thirsty should go to the water. Alter Rebbe explains all that are thirsty for Hashem can quench their thirst with learning teira. So he mentions in uh, Maimarim that you find that um, um, business people are more spiritual than than uh, Torah scholars. And the reason for that is is because they're more thirsty. And the Torah scholars they quench their thirst. You don't feel your thirst if you're always drinking. And the uh, the people that that's why you don't find that yeah, the, 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 a... the yearning and all of that's because they're always uh, hydrated. <laughs> I heard a shop. Business owner is also more spiritual. Yeah. Oh, well, because it's of their trust in Hashem. Trust, yeah. <coughs> and they married, really what the Altar says in the Tanya also is that, that uh, just like water, when he quotes from the Gemara, but just like water goes from a, uh, um, uh, it always goes to its lowest, to the lowest uh, place. Also, the Torah comes from the wisdom of Hashem and it comes down into uh, practicality. This person merits to the inheritance of the two tribes. Merits a kill is a canopy. Just like Yosef, it says by Yosef, Ben Pyrus Yosef. Yosef is, is like a Pyrus, uh, it's like a fruitful vine, like a grapevine. But nice, the branches of it. But nice means daughters, but when you're talking about a, uh, when you're talking about cities, but nice means the small cities. Right, some man tell me, say, Benice Yehuda means the small cities around Yehuda. Benice over here means the branches of the vine. Sada that steps over Ale Shore over the wall. Sada is to step. So we're comparing Yosef to the shore, shore, which means a wall is also a shore, is an ox. It merits also the inheritance of Yisachar. Yisachar is a donkey with strong bones. Garam is in his bones. Bista Amri, there are those that say, Ayvav, Naiflim, Lafan of Yosef, the enemies fall in front of him like they did in front of Yosef. The Ksiv, the Hem Amri, and Aga, Yacht of Afsi Yaretz. With them, with the horns, he gores the nations and the edges of the earth, um, to, or together the other edges of the earth. Zaychel Abina Kiyosachi merits understanding just like Yisachar, the Ksiv, Mne Yisachi, Yedi Bina Leitim. The children of Yisachar, they had they no understanding of the times. So that's my ask Yisrael what the Jewish people should do. That's the verse that says that the person that does Gemilas Chasadim and Isaac and Taira has all of this these merits. Okay. Now the next parak begins like this. It's funny. The next parak, um, the next parak, even how to read the first line is difficult. Taisus has two possibilities over here. This is one possibility. How is and does a foot, does the trampling become a mu'at? Mari answers, the shabar b'darachi lucha. When it tramples, to, when it breaks while it's walking, it tramples on something. It's one way of reading the Gemara, of reading the Mishnah. The other way it goes like this. How does a regal become a mu'at to break while it's trampling? The Gemara answers, an animal. Switched over there between regal and behema. Um, the animal is forewarned lahalech kedarka to walk um, a typical, uh, you know, normal walking lashaber and to break uh, vessels. Let's say it was kicking. This is not regal. This is Karen. If it was kicking, that means it's trying to do damage. It's not a regular walking. Or it has pebbles that are shooting out from under its feet. Doesn't have the uh, the the guard, mud the splash flaps. guard. Is that it's called the splash guard. Mud flaps. Mud flaps. So, um, uh, behind its feet. So uh, and and pebbles um, go flying out. Meshavar sekelim and it breaks vessels. Meshalim chatzinazik. You have to pay half price. So what the Mishnah just did is it did a comparison between Karen when it pays half price because it kicked, and when it's walking normally, and pebbles shoot out. That it also pays half price, even though it goes under a different category, but the amount of money that's paid is the same. One is Karen and one is regal. One is intentional damage, and one is uh, typical damage because it's just walking. But nevertheless, the price over there is the same. The reason why uh, it's usually typical walking is full price. You have to pay for the full damage. 
But over here, because it's only kaychay, it's only not, it's, it's an indirect. It came from the pebbles that he stepped on. Right? It wasn't that he stepped on the vessel. He stepped on pebbles, and those pebbles shot out and broke something off, so the price goes down. Darsala keli, he steps on a vessel, shavrate, he broke it. Menafal al keli and the broken pieces fell on another keli, and it broke that keli, it broke that vessel. So al arisha mishalim nesik shalim, the first vessel you pay full price. Al and then on the second vessel, mishalim tzatz nesik, you pay half price. Why? Because it's again, it's the same thing. It's the uh, <laughs> the It's like a secondary uh, uh, damage. What the piece of the is well, the first one here for the second recorder? No, one second. Let me analyze that a job. Uh, Dr. Stein is asking, what if it's in Rishus and Nizik? So, um, <clears throat> Karen is limited. To Rosh Hashanah and if it's in Rosh Hashanah, it's either Chatzin Nesek or Nesek Shalim. It's Machlekes Reb Tarfin. Rosh Hashanah means the victim's property. But Karen, when we talk about Karen, we're usually talking about Rosh Hashanah that it gored in a public area. If it does something wild like that in the in the in the Rosh Hashanah, that's a Machlekes if it's half price or full price. Now, Shane and Regal are always in Rosh Hashanah. They're always because the animal strayed into into the victim's property and it did something over there. It, uh, uh, just normal, typical eating or, so that's the problem because the owner didn't hold it back from going in there. But if it would be in a Rosh Hashanah, then that would be Pater Legami. There's no payment for, for trampling on, on vessels in a public area. It's normal? It's normal, yeah. For, a, for an animal. Even indirect, <laughs> even the pebbles. In a, right, even indirect. In a uh, in a public area would be potter. Yeah, I think the Gemara is going to talk about that later. But so if there's a street yeah. vendor who puts his pottery out on the <clears throat> sidewalk, and you come and moving comes along with his ox those days, and the ox plows through the, uh, he's not responsible. No, but if Ruben himself breaks it, he's responsible. Yeah. Now it could be if he's if Ruben's walking with his ox, that may be different. I'm not sure. But, I don't know. Yeah. As as a practical matter, how is it established that this ox or any animal has done this thing? Does it require eating to come to a base din? Um, if there's Adim, then there's no argument. Otherwise, it's gonna be I saw your animal break my thing. I'm a bari, another person is a shema. And, um, and yeah, but you come to me and says and say, Naftali, your ox broke my whatever, and I say, okay, sorry about that it's first time. You say, no, no, there were witnesses some other time. Okay, go get those witnesses. Right. I, you have to come to. I say, come to a base then. You have to establish it. If you, right. I, it just seems like no, no, no. It, it, the only way it becomes a muad is if it was already brought to Bezdin. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's been brought to Bezdin a couple times, right? Or three times. It's just that's a lot of trouble to ask somebody to come and say, I was a witness once and saw this animal do this. No, I'm the, saying uh, when it's come, <clears throat> when it's come to Bezdin, <clears throat> so each time it came to Bezdin. Um, if an animal actually gored, so I, I think that those witnesses would actually be, be intentionally uh, establishing it to become a muad. You know, it's it was getting recorded. Yeah, it, it requires aiding to come to to base right. it. You need aid them, right? Right. I guess to become a muad, you would probably need aid them. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the root of the word, aid. I'm not I sure. I read that recently. No, it means aid? It, it, the root of the word is aid, because it requires aiding, and then the word came to be used to say, to mean other things. Uh -huh. I never thought of that like that. I thought muad meant that it was like, like mayed, like a time, like it was like a meeting. 
like something that was set that it was going to happen. Oh, but no, it's not because muad is translated as forewarned. So muad means ha'ada. Ha'ada means was warned. Uh -huh. So yeah, you're right. It does come from the word Aiden. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay. It's just defined by he did it three times before. Yeah, but he's asking what's the word muad? Is it, is it from the well, word Aiden? Muad is three a year. So that's uh. it. He's standing <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Stein. <laughs> That the Maya is three times a year. Okay, so now we're up to a Tanagoyle Muadam Lahalach Kedark and Lil Shaber. The chickens. I just want that belly to this. Um, I wrote are, it down, Rani. It'll be in the book. <laughs> the chickens are are Muad, are uh, forewarned to walk uh, naturally and to break. They don't, you see, the animals don't know. The value of items that they have, they, they don't know what what you can sell on Amazon or whatever. They I don't know, you know. They just broke something. They just walk. They have no consideration of the value of anything. So that's natural for them to step on things and to break. And because of that, the owner has to pay. Let's say there was a string, Dalil, maybe a bucket, uh, or a, or 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 a string that was a tied tied to the feet. Maybe it was hopping. Or dancing, but mashaber sakelim and breaking vessels, mashalim chatzinezek. Then you would only pay half price. We're talking about when the um, the string which got attached to him is similar to tsreiros. It's like it wasn't the animal, it wasn't the chicken himself that caused the damage. It was the thing that got attached to his foot when he was jumping around. That broke something else. So that's considered like one vessel broke another. That those it's it's like the pebbles that shot out. He pecked at the rope, which was a miniature pot, or whatever, hanging onto, and then when he pecked the next chicken, he pecked the next chicken. That's tied to his foot. Chicken's foot. He said it was tied to the foot. Yeah. What do you mean, the pot? The chicken. It said it was like the fruit. Uh, the uh -huh. What does it say? In the Mishnah, Oh, something was tied to its way. Okay. Amalei Ravina, we start the Gemara. Ravina says to Rava. He's asking on the first line of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, how does the regel become a muad? And it says immediately when it breaks while it's walking. The Gemara says, Hainu regel, Hainu behema. Um, because the, the second line of the Mishnah says, <coughs> an animal is muad to walk naturally and to break, which is exactly the same. Basically, you repeated the same sentence by saying the foot is a muad, the animal is a muad. It says, Hainu regel, Hainu behema. It's the same thing. A Malay. So <clears throat> Rava responds to Ravina, Tana Avis Ektani Taldais. The Av Malacha, the uh, not Av Malacha, the Av Hanizak and the Av, Av uh, the 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 father of the uh, the main category is the foot that tramples. The secondary category is the body that causes damage. So it starts off saying the regal, and then it says the behema, and when it says behema, it's referring to if it breaks something with its body because it brushed by it or if maybe with its saddle or something like that. So that, you know, while it's walking by, so, um, or with its hair, so that would also be um, the same, cat, the same under the same category, but it's considered a tulva because it didn't trample on it with its foot, but it broke it with its body. It's also just naturally walking. Elamiyata, if that's the way you want to learn these Mishnayas, that the first line is the av, the second line is the tolda. So the, if you go further, it says, Sefer Dekhtani, Hashem Moedes, Abahima Moedes, the next Mishnah on um, Dafya Test. It says that the, that the um, teeth is um, the, when it eats, when it consumes, that's a moed. And then it says the behemoth is a moed. It says, what do you want to do over there? You want to say, my Yavis, my tolda, Sikha. 
the the Av Malacha, the, not Av Malacha, the Av Nezakin was the is the consuming. What's the told of consuming? Is if with its body it gets pleasure for, by rubbing in the uh, animals, or it rubs it, it scratches itself against the wall. But over here, you didn't you didn't go to that when it said it's eating. It was, it was just one. It eat, if it eats, and then it continued saying eating. So my avos, my toldosikah. You know, over there you're not talking about avos and toldos. Over there you're saying both the av, and you mentioned behema. So it's, it's not consistent. It's not symmetrical with our mishnah. So the have a This is um, Rava is is responding with a joke. He says, I answered one Mishnah. You go answer the other Mishnah. Okay. <clears throat> I think probably what he means to say is that um, I answered one Mishnah. You had a question on it, but the answer to the second Mishnah is not just going to be a repeat of the first Mishnah. You're going to have to find your own answer for the other Mishnah, right? What Ravina was asking was like, okay, so now try to answer the other Mishnah with the same answer. Saying no, you're going to need to find a new uh, new answer for that. The time am I? The Gemara asks. So, what actually is the reason? Amar Ravashi. Ravashi says, "Tanu shein the chayak, tanu shein the behema." The Mishnah teaches us if a wild animal consumes <clears throat> an unde- undomesticated animal consumes food that you have to pay full price. It also says that a domesticated animal that consumes has, the owner has to pay full price. Sal kedait chamina kudent yamai to save v'shilach aspiriksiv. If someone sends his animal into another property, in only if he sends his domesticated animal, but not if he sends his deer or uh, or other animals. I don't know what else this would be considered a chaya. Kamash Malan, it comes to teach us what? Or, or lions. We had it before. A lion. Yeah? The chaya bechlal behema that a uh, a wild animal is goes under the same category as a as a regular animal as a domesticated animal. Ihachi. If that's the case, so what what happened over here? It starts with, you see, our Mishnah started with Regal, and then it goes to Behema. And we answered that Regal is the Av, Behema is the Tolda. And how is Behema the Tolda? Because it's the rest of the body that's doing the same damage that the foot would do when it trampled. Then we go to the next Mishnah. We have Shane, which means the tooth is consuming. And then we have Behema, which is the, an animal that's consuming. So an animal means a domesticated animal. So what was the first case when it said Shane, the tooth? Referring to a wild animal. So the Gemara asks, but the wild animal is the secondary. You should have said the animal first, which that's the main category, and then you include the wild animal, which is the second, a secondary category. It says, Hi, the Gemara says, No, we like the drushes even better, so we put that first. <coughs> like to hear a chiddush. We don't want to hear any, if it's something that we know already. You go to a shear. The person's teaching uh, Perky Ovis, so like, yeah, I read that already. You know, we want to hear something new, something that you never heard. So the the drusha, that the fact that a wild animal is um, is considered uh, is also has to pay. That's the that's the chiddush. That's why we say that first. Yeah, the Gemara compares the, um, the Jewish people to fish. And the Torah is compared to water. It says just like the fish. They, uh, when it when it rains, the fish go up to get the new droplets of water. Even though they have as much water as they want, they don't need any new water. There's no, but they like to hear the chiddush. They like to hear the new the new drops that are coming in. That's why they all go always go up to the top. To get that. So, Yehachi Reisha Nami listening. Hayid Ksiva Bereisha. Hayid like Ksiva Bereisha. Why doesn't in the beginning? Why don't we say Habehema Moedas, which that's the tolda. And then say regal afterwards, if you're so impressed with the with the chiddush. So do the tolda first. Umar says, he says, hold it, you're taking this too far. Over there, by Shane, when it comes to consumption, both of them are obvious. There's the animal and there's the wild animal. So we said the wild animal first because that's the drasha, that's the chiddush. But hacha, but over here, you're going to say the subcategory before you say the main category? Yeah, it's not it's not exactly the same thing that you should ask that you should say regal first, that you should say behema before regal. That's a tolda. Ibayasema, I can give you another terrace. If you want, you could say I did the Salak Miragal Pasuk Miragal. The fact is the last mission that we had on Daf Tesvav 
We spoke about regal. It says Chamisha Tam and Chamisha Moadim. Said over the year. Um, Regal Muedas. One of the cases over there, we said, Regal Muedas Lishbar Bidera Chilucha. So that was the last thing that you mentioned. So now in our Mishnah, we say Regal first. Continue with where we left off. Tanur Abanan was done in a brace. Abayim Muedas Lalach Kedak Lishaber. That an animal is uh, Muad, is forewarned to walk naturally, typically, and to break items. Kate said, How would this work? An animal walks into the courtyard of the victim. And it breaks with its body as it's walking. It breaks with its hair while it's walking. With the saddle. I think means the, uh, the package that it's on it. With some sort of muzzle that's in its mouth. Or maybe it bangs the bell that's hanging around its neck. Or a donkey with its load. I'm going to have to pay Nezek Shalim. Sumchus Aimer. Sumchus, we're introduced over here to Sumchus. Sumchus is uh, the student of Reb Meir, major student of Reb Meir, one of the greatest of the sages, quoted all over. Says, but he has his opinions are very um, outspoken and unique. Says, Tsreiris Vechazir Shayanaver Bashba Behizik. Tsreiris, which means the pebbles, or a pig that was um, like digging into with its nose, the pig digs with its nose, yeah. it pushes with its nose into, a, into the garbage. And when it's pushing in, it shot out something else, like it bangs into it, uh, burrowing into it. The hizik, it causes damage. Mishalim nezik shalim, you have to pay nezik shalim. Not like what we said in our Mishnah, that Tzreiris pebbles is chatzin nezik. Sumchus, his opinion is that Tzreiris pebbles is nezik shalim. The Gemara says, hizik pshita, I, I jumped ahead in the Gemara. I'm telling you to conclude. Obviously, you have to pay Nesek Shalom if it causes damage. It doesn't mean that it caused the damage directly. It means that it shot out pebbles, and from the, what it shot out, it caused damage. That's going to be Nesek Shalom. Tzreiris, man, who brought up Tzreiris? Who brought this up? Because the Gemara says, we have to adjust the price, and we'll say the following. Tzreiris, if there would be pebbles that shot out from under the animal, you'd have to pay half price. Or if there's a pig that's burrowing into the garbage and it shot, shoots out some pebbles or whatever it is, and it was the damage, you have to pay half price. He argues, he says, that those two cases, you have to pay full price. Let me go to the, just to the next two dots. Chickens that are, are um, flying from one place to another, they break, oh, flutter. Um, and they break vessels with their wings. You have to pay full price. If it's the wind that comes from under the wings, they only pay half price. That's considered strayrus, just like the pebbles shoot out. It's indirect and it's like his opinion was before, you have to pay full price. Tani Yidach, you have another price. Tani Gerl and Shemim Adad, Mahatzim Al Gabi Isa, Al Gabi Peiros. They're hopping the chickens on top of a dough or on top of fruits. For Tinfoy Nikru, or they make it dirty or they make holes. Probably not in the dough. Probably in the fruits that would ruin the fruit. In the dough, there's holes anyway. Mishalim Nesik Shalim, you have to pay full price. Hello, Alfred Sirus. It raises up dirt or pebbles. You have to pay half price. Some says that it's full price. Some opinion. We have another price. The wind comes out from under the, the chicken. breaks You have to pay half price. Stomach That was an anonymous price that follows the opinion of the rabbanon. Amar Rava. Rava says. I understand Sumchus. Sumchus says that the power. The secondary power that comes from it is considered like the body. You have to pay full price. But according to the Rabbani, if it's like the body, you have to pay full price. What is the power that comes from it? The secondary power. Is that like the body or not? It says, if it's not like the body, you shouldn't pay anything. It, 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 was it him or was it not him? Really, it is him. But it's secondary.
the tradition that we have. Okay, let's leave it over here. It's a tradition that we have that it's half price. Oops. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, so, you know, you mentioned